Hi, my name is Devin Knight from Pragmatic Works, and in this video, we're going to be tackling a pesky setting with inside of Power Automate around sending an email as a different user. So you set up a Power Automate flow, you use something like the Outlook connector and the send an email action, and you want to not send it as you, you want to send as someone else. And to be able to do that, there's some settings that you need to turn on, and that's what we're going to be covering in this video. Look forward to sharing with you. Let's come back here in just a moment and talk more about it. All right, so I have two different flows that I've designed here to really show you two different types of settings. Uh, they're both essentially doing the same thing. They're sending an email, and if we take a peek at it, if I go into my send as user flow, uh, and if I go ahead and edit this flow, we'll see that I have a uh, basic flow set up here with a manual trigger that's sending an email using the Outlook connector. Many of you have likely used this connector before. And uh, if I explore this connector, you can see that I'm trying to send to my Pragmatic Works email, uh, but I'm sending using a separate login here. I'm using this separate connector or the separate account called LabAdmin23. Keep that in mind because what I want to do is I actually want to send and create this flow using LabAdmin23, but I want it to appear as if the email came from someone else. So you might have explored the advanced settings of this action before. And as you go into the advanced settings, you'll know that notice that there is this option that you can send an email as a different user. So even though I'm logged in and designing my flow as LabAdmin23, I actually want to send the email from LabAdmin24. Now, if you've tried this before, you may have gotten an error. And just to show you what that error might look like, I'll go ahead and run my flow here now. And I'm going to get an error telling me that I don't have permission to send from a different user. You're seeing the error pop up above my head right now. I'll take myself off camera for a moment here. But you're seeing that the error message that you would typically see found right here, that you're not authorized to send email on behalf of a specified sending account. And so this has to do with mailbox delegation and whether or not you have access to send from that email. Uh, and so what I'm going to walk you through is how to make those settings changes. This is likely something that you would have to work with your Office 365 administrator to be able to do. You likely will not have access to go to some of the areas that I'm telling you to go to. So heads up on that in advance that you'll need to work with your administrative team on setting up this mailbox delegation. So the first place that we need to go to get started is the Microsoft Admin Center. So I'm going to bring my web browser over here where I've already signed in with an admin account. This is someone that has admin permissions, really global admin permissions with inside of the tenant that I'm working with inside of. And so with this account, we have the ability to change mailbox delegation. The way you can do that is you would go, whenever you go to admin.microsoft.com, you can then over on the left-hand side, click show all, and this will show you the other admin centers that are available with inside of Microsoft, including things like the Teams administration, SharePoint administration, or in our case, we want to do Exchange administration. So I'm going to go ahead and navigate over to Exchange administration. And I am actually looking at the new view of the Exchange administration site. You may have a slightly different view if you're running the older view. Uh, you can change that, though, if you want. But for what we want to do, we're going to go over to Mailboxes over on the left-hand side. So on the far left, we'll go Navigate to and Find Mailboxes. So I'll do that here on my screen. And then what I want to do is I want to set up delegation capabilities on the specific inboxes that we're trying to send emails from. So if I go look back at my flow for a moment here, let's go just Alt-Tab back over to where we were. I'll minimize this for a moment. And I go back into Edit Mode, I can see that the email inbox I'm trying to send from is lab admin 24. So if I were to switch the delegation capabilities on lab admin 24 to allow lab admin 23 to send emails from it, I should no longer get that error message that we're receiving right now. So let's give it a try. We're going to go back over to uh, here and we're going to go find my lab admin 24 account. That would be found right here. And when I select the lab admin 24, you'll notice there's a mailbox delegation capability or setting that you can select up top. You can either click on this or you can actually click on the lab admin 24 account. And then you'll see delegation over here on the right hand side as well. It takes you to the same place. It's the same exact thing, uh, regardless of which route you go to it. 
But underneath the delegation settings, there are a few different options that you can choose from. And the two that we're going to really focus on are the send as and send on behalf options here. And what we're going to do for our lab admin 24 is we're going to edit the send as to allow my uh, lab admin 23 to send as this account. Okay, so by doing this, we can go into the edit section here, add a member, and we can type in and search for lab admin 23. That's the one that I'm designing the flows as, and then hit save, and then hit confirm. Now this can take a little bit of time. It may not show results immediately. In fact, it gives you a little warning message right here saying that, hey, you, there may be up to about a five minute delay in doing this. So don't be shocked if you don't see it work right away. Check back in a few moments if it does not work immediately. But while we're here, I also wanna explore the other feature that we saw just a moment ago, which was delegation on behalf of. So if you wanted to make it so that a user can send on behalf of someone versus sending as them, I'm gonna show you the difference between those two as we work through here. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this because I have a secondary flow. Let me go flip back over to our flows here. I have a secondary flow that I've created called send on behalf. And this one is gonna be using a different account to send as. So if I go look at this one, you'll see that I'm using a different account called lab admin 22. And this one, I wanna show you what happens if we use the send as on behalf of rather than the send as option. So for lab admin 22, we're gonna go ahead and go back over to where we were just a moment ago. Here we go. So I'm gonna go over to lab admin 22 this time, set up mailbox delegation. And this time I'm gonna say send on behalf and we're gonna send on behalf of lab admin 23. So again, that's my account that I'm using to design my flows. Oh, let's select add member first. This is the account that I'm using to design my flows. And so if you had a service account or something like that that you were using as a connector for Outlook, you could set up the mailbox delegation either on behalf of or send as in this mailbox delegation section here. All right, so I'll hit save on this and confirm. So now I have set up delegation using the on behalf of and also the send as. And so now I wanna show you the difference between those two and how does that impact whenever your users actually send the flow and run the flow? And what does it look like whenever someone receives in, uh, mail from those individuals as well? All right, so now that we've done the administrative side of things, again, everything in this admin section is going to be either your Exchange admin, this may be your Office 365 administrator, just depends on how that's set up at your organization, but this is likely uh, something that you may not have access to do if you're simply designing flows. This is a little bit of an elevated access that you might need. All right, so let's go back over to our flow that we were working on. I'll minimize this. And let's actually go, wow, I got a lot open here. Let me go back over to the flow design that we had open. Here it is. And I'm ready to test this out. Now that we've set up those two different settings with inside of the administrative center, we're gonna go ahead and run the send as user flow again. I'm hoping this time that we don't get an error. Hopefully I've given it enough time for it to do its magic behind the scenes. But I'm gonna go ahead and test this, do a manual test and hit test to run this flow. Now, if I haven't given, given enough time, I'm expecting I'm gonna get an error still. In, in fact, it looks like I do get an error still. So let me give it a few more moments. I'll do a little magic of editing here and then we'll run it again once the settings have been uh, applied correctly. And then I'll show you what the inbox finally looks like at the end. So that way we know the proper flow is coming through, being sent as the proper user. So let's give it a few moments here. Magic of editing, we'll be right back. All right, we've let the appropriate time go by. In fact, it took about 10 minutes before the uh, flow finally would start running the proper way. By the way, I noticed that the sending on behalf of someone, that setting seemed to be able to process itself a lot faster than the send as. I don't know if that's a normal thing or not, but that's the way it happened to work in my example here. But now that I've given it the appropriate amount of time for those settings to take place, when I go to run my flow and I hit to test the flow, hit test, it will run my flow successfully and the output of it, the result of it, once we actually let the flow run, you can see it ran successfully now. Again, this flow is running as a different user. Uh, even though I'm connected in and, and logged in as labadmin23, when I go look at my inbox, here's the email that I just sent myself. It sent me an email from labadmin24. So again, by going into the exchange admin settings, which is something you likely don't have access to do, you'll work with your admin team on that, you're able to send as a different user. 
Now, I also mentioned that there was another option called where you can send on behalf of someone else. We, we turned that setting on as well, and that would be the flow that we see right here. The only difference is really the flow is identical. I'm just sending as a different user. This one's sending as on behalf of Lab Admin 22. So if I were to test this flow and run it, we will receive an email that's slightly different. The text is gonna be in the body of the email is gonna be the same, but when we go to look at my inbox, I'm waiting for it to show up here now, should take just a few moments, the, from, it, from who it came from will appear a little bit different. So when that arrives in my inbox, we will see a note that says, here it is now, that LabAdmin23 on behalf of LabAdmin22 sent this email. So you have the option to choose which method you want. Do you want it to actually overtly say that it's sent on behalf of someone else? Or do you want it to appear as if you are actually sending it from a different email address? You'll work with your Exchange Administrator and then the setting with inside of Power Automate that we saw was underneath the Advanced section. So you'll need to expand the Advanced section to be able to find the Send From settings right here. So that's it for this video. It's a very common uh, roadblock that I've seen many people have. So now you know how to change who your email is being sent from. Hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you so much. And we look forward to sharing more information with you in our next video. Don't forget, by the way, to make sure to like and subscribe this video to find other great content that we've made available to you as well, all for free. Thanks so much. Take care.